and welcome to this SAS companion for Lecture 10. Again, Lecture 10 covered the factorial treatment structure and a randomized complete block design. Um, so in other words, we've got that blocking, but we've also got the factorial treatment structure. Um, and again, factorial treatment structure only arises when you've got two or more fixed effects that we care about. So we'll open up SAS. And the data we're going to use is going to come from uh, page 504. Um, it's data that's in table 916. It's chapter 9, table 16. And we're actually going to produce the, uh, the table, uh, the results table 10.9 on page 543, just to show you how all the numbers got there. So first and most important thing what we can do is um, import the data. And we can do it the long way, which I did. And let's go ahead and make this bigger, if I can remember how. There, that's bigger. Now, raise that up a bit. So, again, time, heat, and machine are all independent variables. Length is our uh, dependent variable. It's what we're trying to model. Time has three levels, 8 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and 15 o'clock. Heat has two levels, W and L, I believe. And machine has four levels, A, B, C, and D. Um, heat and machine, or I'm sorry, just machine, is the RAM effect. Uh, time and heat are both fixed effects because we want to look to see if there's an effect of time on, on the length and if there's an effect of heat on the length. Machine is a RAM effect because there's a lot of machines in the factory, and I'm only using this sample of four, and I really don't care to compare the machines. And so again, it's the usual dichotomy between fixed effects and random effects. Fixed effects, we care about the levels. Random effect, we don't. We're just pulling from a larger population. So there's all the data. Let's go ahead and run a proc univariate just to get a feel for the data. And let's go ahead and do quit. Let's see what we've got. So sample size is 96. Oh, and by the way, I am showing you this so that you can compare your results with mine just so that you make sure that you've got the right data. Um, the mean is 3.9583333. Variance is 10.92. Um, mean, median, mode. Median, mode are both 4. The mean is really close to 4, so it looks like the data is rather symmetric, which is nice. Uh, we can do some tests for location if we want. I don't. Um, so there, that's what we got. So double check that yours matches that. And we can also look at uh, box plots. Uh, the box plot, it's proc box plot, and for some reason, B. There we go. Um, and again, specify the data. Um, then the, give the plot. Uh, length is the dependent variable by time. And I'll hit the run and we'll see a mistake. I don't really care about those, so I'll go ahead and comment those out. And we'll see a mistake that I made. Whoa, sh there's three times, so there should be three boxes here. Why do I have so many? Well, because SAS requires that you sort the data first. So you Precede this with a proc sort. And what you're going to sort it by, you're going to sort it by time. And now we run this and we get our three boxes as we would expect. Uh, we can also uh, do this proc. Thinkers are not working like usual. Or actually, they are working like usual. Sorry about that. Uh, let's do this by uh, heat. Why are we choosing these two? Well, those are these are our two fixed effects. So 
So heat L has a lower length, W has a higher length on average, but it doesn't look to be a significant difference. Um, there also doesn't look to be too much of a difference amongst the three times. So we did that and had fun. So now we're going to do our ANOVA. Uh, we're going to use, that's right, we're going to use a PROC GLM. That PROC GLM can do an awful lot of things. Um, again, we need to specify what our categorical variables are. It's time, heat, and machine. Don't forget machine is also a categorical variable. Um, specify our model. Dependent variable is length. And then to match what's in table 10.9, we'll list out machine, time, heat, uh, time times heat. And then time heat machine, times heat, times machine. And then don't forget we have to specify what our random effects are. There's actually two. There's machine. And then there's time times heat times machine. And then run. And then there is going to be an error on this, just so you're aware. So we'll run it, and we'll see what that error is. Let's go all the way back at those. OK, so there's the GLM procedure, three levels in time, two levels in heat, four machines. So that makes sense to me, 96 observations. This table is the top of table 10.9. Model error, er, model error, correct total. Make sure all the numbers line up. P-value is less than alpha. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis that there is no effect of heat and time and machine. So there is an effect of those three altogether. There's the R, fair, R squared, the coefficient of variation, the root mean squared. The root mean squared is just the square root of the mean squared error, hence the root mean squared error, and then the average of the lengths. Now so those four are given in the next part of the table. And then third part of the table, starting with machine time heat, machine time heat, 3, 2, 1, 2, 15. Notice that 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 15 is equal to the 23. Notice also that if we add up all these type 1 sums of squares, they will add up to 590.333. Notice if we add up all the mean squares, they will not. We would not expect them to, but they will not add up to the 25.66. Because the mean squareds are the sums of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. Those are the f values, and those are the p values. Notice something. This is the middle of the table. And as the book says, these p values and f values are wrong. Why? Let's go down to this last table. This p-value of 0 0.5, I'm sorry, 0 0.8762, that's the test of time by heat. So that's variance of error plus the variance of time heat machine plus some function of time and some function of heat. This is what we're supposed to be testing if this function of time and heat is equal to zero. In order to do that, we need to somehow divide out by everything that we're not testing. We have to divide out by that variance of the error and the four variances of the time heat machines. Dividing by the mean squared error, which is that variance of error, only gets rid of this first part. We need to get rid of all of this. So instead of dividing by the mean squared error, which these f values are, we need to divide out by the time heat machine variance. Because notice that there's a variance of the error and the four variance of the time heat machine in it. So if you divide the time by heat by the time by heat by machine, your leftover is just that function of time by heat. SAS divided by the mean squared error. So we need to figure out some way, and that's why it's wrong. We've got to find out some way of getting SAS to divide by the actual correct uh, time heat machine variance. 
It's pretty easy. Notice on the random, we're going to add in one option. And that option is test. And that's it. We run this now. We get everything else before. But now we've got this last table. Machine, time, heat, time, heat. And that error, notice the error is degrees of freedom 15, sums of squares of 82.33. I'm reading the last line in table 10.9. And now all of these f values are the mean squareds divided by that 5.48888, not by the mean squared error. So these f values are now correct, and the p values are correct. Of course, it's up to you to determine which of these f values and p values are appropriate to interpret. You would not want to interpret the machine because that's a RAM effect. You would want to interpret the one for time, the one for heat, and most likely the, the interaction of time and heat. So there we go. That's how we generate table 10.9 in SAS. Here's the steps again. Step one, put the data in there. Cool. Step two, and again, it's a common step two, is get to know the data. Step three, it's going to be PROC GLM. Make sure you specify the class variables. These are the categorical variables. The model, and we included times times heat and times time heat times machine and then specify the random effects according to this experiment machine is a random effect because we just pulled four machines out of our factory we weren't looking to compare the effects of the machines we were just using machines and then anything of multiplying the machine is also going to be a random effect because even though time and heat and time times heat are fixed when you add in that randomness, it becomes a random effect. And then to get it to divide by the correct denominator, the times time times heat times machine, you add in the option test. So I'm going to delete those results. I'm going to rerun this whole thing. And we can see what that code at the end gives us. This typical first page for a GLM procedure. This is the top. This is a test of the model as a whole. Since the p-value is less than alpha, we do know that the effects of machine times and heat are not all zero. We reject the null, and again, null means zero. There's the r squared value, the coefficient of variation, the root mean squared. It's just the square root of the 6.215278, and the average of the dependent variable. Got the ANOVA tables. For, and the f value and the p values for those are based on dividing by the mean squared error, which is incorrect, and we discussed that in the book and in the lecture. SAS is nice enough to give us this little table of what actually is being calculated here. And then we get the correct f values and p values for us to interpret. Uh, time, uh, time times heat not statistically significant, time not statistically significant, heat statistically significant. So I would conclude that um, W and L, those are the two levels of heat, uh, produce significantly different uh, lengths and there is no effect of time. So the three shifts um, don't produce different, on average, don't produce different lengths of whatever we're measuring, steel bars. And that's it. So hopefully this was helpful. I'll highlight the important part. And I wish you a good day. Take care.